yeah, it was hard because you, you had to carry all your food, all your batteries, all your everything. And you didn't see anybody for six weeks. You know, for three weeks in that bush, you didn't see anyone. That was it. It was just you and the eight guys you were with, or the four guys, sometimes only four. OP was only four. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, when you did follow-ups, that was hard work. Because to fire force, they might drop you and say, sweep that area. And you'd be an extended line going through the bush, just about trotting to keep up with it, you know, because especially if the dogs find the spore or the, or the trackers found the tracks, and you'd be on the flank with a machine gun, you'd have to really be fit to keep up. And you could walk as much as 30 k's in one day. Yeah, in follow-up. Yeah, so it was, um, you didn't have a sleeping bag, you just used a parachute, you never took your shoes off. You never smoked at night, you never cooked at night. Um, and wherever you cook, you never stay in the same place move so your night when you move in a night operation or in a night position you never you have your food a kilometer away and then you move into your area last light you know because somebody might have seen you or smelt your food you know you don't clean your teeth you don't wash the soap so when we used to get in the choppers when we got picked up after three weeks and those air force guys used to geez you guys are humming uh, because you can't do that because the terrorists and the dogs will pick up your scent very, very quickly. So you've got to smell as bad as the terrorists. So a lot of times, before we went out, we'd blacken our faces, and then we'd, um, we'd smoke ourselves in leaves. So we smelled just like them in the compounds. Because if you didn't, your position would be given away very, very quickly. Yeah, so a lot of you, me as a corporal, I was given an area to patrol, and I was given a massive map, and you do what you want, he said, whatever you want to do. All you got to do is report to us every day at 12 o'clock what your intentions are, what you're going to do, what you did last night. So they call it a sit rep. So you give a sit rep, and it's all in code. Um, so you learn the code when you do your signals course. So you don't say, we're moving to OP this, so we are moving, could be Alpha, Bravo, Charlie. Today, from uh, one, or Alpha could be one, or Bravo tomorrow would be three, you know what I mean? So my grid reference, um, you don't say my grid reference, but my grid reference could be a word like, uh, for example, major is sunray. So sunray, we're at grid, but you don't, on the map, you know, you got your, you go in the house and up the stairs. So it could be 178 and then 139, and you can locate where we are on the map. But you don't say that on the radio, it's all in shackle. So one today would be Alpha, tomorrow it would be Charlie, next day it would be Zulu. <coughs> so yeah, so every day, just tell them what you're doing. Report, if you have a contact, if you observe terrorists like we did, then um, uh, then you just call Fire Force in. And you give them, then you can give them your grid referencing clear, because they're up in the air there. So they'll take off from the airport and uh, locate your position because you'll see them you'll see the choppers coming and you'll say bank left bank right and when he's overhead when he goes overhead you say overhead now and you mark flot which is your front line of your troops because they're not going to take you out and then you say from the high position 100 meters um enemy and they'll come in and blast it if they short you'll say add 50 or add 20, or add go right 20, go left 20. And when he's on target, you say on target, then you see the jets come out the sky and do boom, boom, boom. Or the um, push pull, which the front hand bomb. Yeah, so. And then um, when you're in fire force, gee, that's fun. Because you can, you can be called out. Don't forget there's troops everywhere. So you could be called out five, six times a day. And every time you go out, you know you're going to have a contact. So your adrenaline's really going. And the choppers will drop you. You stop one, stop two, stop three, stop four, stop five. So they can five helicopters. So stop one is the first team out. Once you've done that, you go to the back of the list. So and then you become stuck two, then you become stop three, and then four, and then five. Then you go back to one. 
So 1, 2 and 3 could be called out first. If they need more troops, they're called 3, 4 and 5 here. And when you're in the chopper, you just sit with your earphones on and you'll say, 20 said terrorists sighted at this grid reference. We're going to drop you um, as a stop group or we're going to drop you as a sweep group. And then when you're on the ground, you just say stop one on the ground. And the major will, no, above all the choppers is the major. And he's in the Keiko. He's what they call the Keiko. And he controls you. It's like a chessboard. And he just says, um, he'll say stop one. I'd like you just to stay where you are. And he'll say stop two, sweep towards stop one. And he's watching it. And then you've got a compass. Because obviously you can get misorientated very quickly. So we all had compasses, wrist compass. And you just say sweep east because you haven't got time to look at the sun and all this. You've got to keep your eyes on the ground and you will go an extended line. You just flush an area where they think the terrorists are. If you come into contact and you find that it's um, the fire is too heavy, you can just go to ground and then call in front and bomb. Or you could call in the, the K car with the, with the 30 mil cannon. But yeah, no, it was all pretty well worked out. But the major was like a, it was like a chessboard. And then once you sweep an area and they start running because they bolt. When they've got to fight proper soldiers, they run. And they run straight into the stop grip. And they shoot them all. And then when you finish, you put all the body bags. Your big net comes. Put all the bodies in a body bag. And a big net. And then they take off and they go back to the airport. And then you now you become stop two. So you put all your webbings ready, your weapons ready, but you can eat hamburgers, you can play volleyball, you can do anything until they call you again. And that can happen five times in a day, sometimes only once a day. And then other times when you're in fire force, you could get called out at night. Get called out at night as well when farmers got attacked. Or because they're, you know, obviously the terrorists picked all soft targets. It was farmers and... Um, mums on their own and kids and all that sort of thing so they'd call you out as a fire force backup and you'd have to go in the four tunnels then trucks and go down and sweep an area or go through a compound or whatever go to the farmer's house and protect them or... so that's what you did all the time you know? 